Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to tell you about OpenSpec, a new library that can help you do spec-driven development. So OpenSpec is a new toolkit that helps you to use spec-driven development for developing and maintaining your application. It helps humans and AI coding assistants to plan and agree on what to build before any code is written. It requires no API keys and it ensures your intent is locked before implementation. Basically, the process will give you a more deterministic and structured results instead of random AI 5 coding output. It keeps everything aligned with proposals, tasks, as well as spec updates, making scope changes reviewable and transparent. Now, you might be asking, what's the difference between this and Specit? Well, OpenSpec is basically a more lightweight version of Specit as it has less commands and more minimal setup. What's more, OpenSpec uses a two-folder model. There is the specs folder for the current state, and then there is the changes folder for proposed updates. This model scales better when you modify existing features or touch multiple specs. On the other hand, SpecKit works best for greenfield or brand new projects where you start from scratch. Once your code base evolves, managing updates and changes across specs become quite messy as there is less structure. It's not ideal for ongoing development. In short, OpenSpec promises to bring more control, clarity, and reliability as you use spec-driven development to build and maintain your application. Also, it's supported by many popular AI tools like CloudCode, Cursor, OpenCode, KiloCode, and many, many others. So next, I will show you how to set up OpenSpec in your app project. Now, before we jump into the exciting part, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss new videos that can really help you level up your skills. Also, don't forget to click on the bell to get notified whenever a new video comes out. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel, you really help me make useful videos just like this one. First, you need to install the tool using npm, which means you have to have Node.js installed on your computer. If you don't have Node.js already, then you can install it for free at Node.js.org. Just click on the install button here to get it up and running. Once you have Node.js installed, copy the command here, open your terminal, paste the command, and press enter. It will take a few minutes to install, but once done, you can verify the installation by running the openspec dash dash version command to see if it's installed. Okay, I have it available here. Now we can initialize openspec in our project directory, and I'm going to do so inside VS Code. So on the screen here, I've gone ahead and created a sample application that I'm going to build with the help of openspec. Currently, this is a React app just generated using Vite, uh, we can try to run it using npm run dev. And here we can see there is nothing yet. So back in VS Code, what we're going to do now is to initialize OpenSpec in this project directory. I'm going to expand the terminal window here so that you can view it better. And then run the command OpenSpec in it which will initialize OpenSpec on this project. Now it says you need to configure OpenSpec first, so just press enter, and now you can select between different options available here. OpenSpec currently supports many popular extensions and IDEs like CloudCode, Client, Cursor, WindSurf, and so on. Right now, I'm going to use Kilo Code as that's part of my daily tools, but you can choose any other options. Select your tool and then press enter. Here you can undo the selection if somehow you choose the wrong tool, but if not, just press enter. And that's it. Now OpenSpec workflows and templates are added to the project directory. This is quite similar to how SpecKit works. So if you go to the project explorer here, you can see the .kilocode slash workflows folder, and it has OpenSpec custom slash commands. And if you open the OpenSpec folder here, there is the agents.md file for instructions, as well as changes and specs directories, where the technical documentations will be stored. Alright, the next steps are presented by OpenSpec on the terminal here. So the first thing to do is to populate the project markdown file with your project detail, such as the summary, the text tag, and conventions used. You can ask the AI to help with this, so just open your AI assistant, for me it's killer code here, and then just paste the prompt in the chat box. Press enter to send the prompt, and let killer code work on the request for a moment. It will scan the project to figure out a summary of what the project is about, and then add technical details such as the text stack used, how to run it, and so on. Okay, so killer code has completed the first step here. We can see the project description on the screen. 
And then the next step is to prompt the AI for a new feature you want to add, followed by this instruction to create an open spec change proposal for the feature. Now I already have my prompt and it's a bit long, so I'm just going to paste it here. Basically, this prompt describes the app I want to build, which is a Trello-style Kanban board app for managing tasks. Here, I describe the spec, such as what the columns can do, and then the cards, as well as persisting the data in local storage to keep this app simple. I ask it to implement the UI and the JS logic exactly according to the spec above, keep the code clean and easy to read. Below this prompt, just add create an open spec change proposal for this feature, as hinted by open spec. Press enter and let the agent work on the request. Once ready, the agent will start by generating the proposal for this new feature. The proposal will list the reasons for this change as well as what will be changed on the project. After that, it will generate the tasks that can be executed step by step by AI agents before writing the spec document which outlines the scenarios that needs to be fulfilled by the change. This is actually quite convenient as it means you get the complete technical requirements with just a single command or prompt, while in spec kit you have to generate them one by one. And once it's all done, you can go to the proposal, the tasks, and the spec document to see if they are exactly how you want them to be. After that, you can start implementing the tasks. But if this is your first time running OpenSpec, then you can also run the third step here, which is to ask the AI to explain the OpenSpec workflow. Basically, you can create proposal for changes by running the previous command, and then implement them by telling the agent to proceed or implement the spec. You don't have to run a custom command as OpenSpec will provide the agent with the right context, and once the changes are done, you can archive the changes so OpenSpec can differentiate between past changes and what's current. For more details, you can read the output of the third command here, but for now, let's proceed to implement the new feature. Just prompt the AI to let's implement this, and the agent will start working on the request. It will make changes to the app as we can see here, and then it will also work on the app styling. And in Kilo Code, it will also open a browser in the background to test the app. And once all is finished, it will say task completed, and we can start exploring the app ourselves. Now, this will take a while, so I will skip a bit when it's finished. Okay, here it all has been finished, so it's time to explore the result. I will open the browser here. And it seems the styling is a bit off. I think the board title and the add column button can stretch to the right here. But let's just test the app for now. Let's create a new column. And for the name, maybe tasks. Okay, the column is now created. Let's create another one here for finish tasks. And then uh, another one for backlogs. Now let's try to drag the columns around. Okay, they can switch places just fine. Now let's add a new card. I will call this explore open spec. For the description, let's leave it empty for now. And for the color, I will put blue here. Okay, the card is created. We can see the blue accent on the left side. Uh, let's edit this for now and then add a description. All right, we can add a description to the card. So nice. Let's move the card around. Okay, it works. There is also a little animation there, changing the angle of the boards when the card is moving around, uh, so that's a pretty nice touch. Now let's create a new card, and the title will be Mark Spec as Archived. Give it red color. Okay, here's the second card, and we can move it around as well. Finally, let's delete the first card here. Alright, now delete a column. It works, so there seems to be no issue with the functionalities. Uh, we can definitely improve this app further, adjust the styling to be more responsive. But for now, let's go back to VS Code. And here, I want to archive spec as the proposed changes have been implemented. So we can run the open spec command here, which is open spec archive the spec name and then add the yes option. This will mark the spec as archived and remove it from active changes. So go back to the chat box and press enter. We can see here that the agent wants to run the open spec command, so just allow it. And now the changes are archived. Now you can send a new proposal for changes, so I will do just that here. Let's prompt the agent to adjust the CSS styling of the Kanban board and make it responsive. 
After that, just add the same instruction to create an open spec change proposal. Press enter and the agent will work on the new proposal request. It will generate the proposal and then the tasks and the spec documents. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. So that's how OpenSpec works in a nutshell. Overall, this is a pretty awesome tool that can turn prompts into a structured, reviewable proposal and implementation plan that can guide your AI agent. You can also view all active proposals by running the OpenSpec view command. Here you can see the summary of specifications, active changes, completed changes, and task progress. This overview makes it easier to remember what have been done in the project. And one thing I definitely notice is that OpenSpec is indeed more lightweight when compared with SpecKit because with just one command or prompt, it can generate the proposal, the tasks, and the spec of the new feature. While in SpecKit, there is a command for each step and the markdown documents are also more precise and output less words when compared to SpecKit's output, which means less tokens are used in the long run. If we look at Kilo code here, notice that it costs just about $1 to generate one feature spec and implement it, while in SpecKit, it will probably causes more. Unlike SpecKit, which aims to be as detailed and precise as possible, OpenSpec doesn't try to fill in too much detail, but rather, it generates mostly enough context that you can review and revise as you see fit. So if you're interested in trying it out, just head over to its GitHub repo as it's free and open source. I will leave a link to this in the description below. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about OpenSpec? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I hope you'll learn how to code and use AI tools. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!